to preface this whole presentation, uh, we'll let you know if you go to your Zoom settings and press the participants button uh, on your laptop, it'll open up on the, on the side, on the right side of your screen, a bar for you to be able to see everyone's name who's in here. And on the very bottom, you'll be able to raise your hand. So that is kind of how we'll be able to answer your questions. So if at any point throughout this presentation that you have a question or something you would like to know, just go ahead and raise your hand uh, on your on that little button right there and we'll be able to answer your questions uh, when we come across a break. Uh, so to start, I'm a, my name is Zachary Sabraba. I'm a Residence Life Coordinator here at Charleston Southern University. I'm also a former alumni, so there was a time where I was sitting in your shoes, uh, accepted the school and came in as a student in 2011, graduated in 2016, and then came on staff uh, summer of 2016. So. I've been working here ever since, so I'm a buck through and through. Um, I love blue and gold. My half, more than two thirds of my wardrobe is navy. Uh, you know, so it's it's an awesome experience to be here at CSU. So that's a little bit about me. I'm gonna let Jessica go ahead and introduce herself before we get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Hobbs. I am also a resident life coordinator here at CSU. Um, I oversee two and a half buildings right now. Um, and I have been here since 2018, so this is my second year here on staff. I did not attend school here. However, I do love being here, so I'm glad to be an honorary book at this moment, and I am in grad school right now, so I guess I'm not an honorary book. I'm an actual book. I don't know, but I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to see all of you here today, and I'm excited to talk to you more about Res Life and answer any questions that you may have. So, yep, you are a true graduate buck, which is awesome. I, too, am in grad school, hoping to finish that up this May, you know, Lord willing. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to start a presentation. We're going to have a couple PowerPoint slides for you. Like I said, if at any point you have a question, just raise your hand. Um, when I get through some of our information side of our presentation, we'll stop for a short time of answering those questions, a little bit of Q&A, and then we're going to transition to a virtual tour of some of our buildings that you're going to be able to be living in. So Jessica and I are going to kind of facilitate that. Uh, this is something new, so welcome to our virtual open house. <laughs> we are super excited to have you, so I'm going to go ahead uh, and share my screen. Oh, host, Jessica, you have to enable it, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I can do that. I, awesome. I uh, so to start off, welcome. This is an awesome time for y'all. Um, you know, I'll go ahead and get started with the presentation before I can really share the screen with y'all. But in Residence Life, our, our mission statement is to create a community that honors God and enables students to thrive. And, and what that looks like for us lived out is um, everyone on staff at Charleston Southern University is a professing Christian, and our desire is to truthfully create an environment that, that honors God and some of our policies and procedures and the way we do things, uh, but also to create a community for you to thrive. Um, understanding that not everyone who comes to CSU is a professing Christian, and that is okay, um, but we love you regardless, and we want to create a community that really honors God and enables you to thrive in its best fashion, and we do that through a couple principles. Um, so let me go ahead and... Uh, you should be able to share it. Yeah, see that. Okay. Got to get this. There we go. Okay. So, got to get this up and running. So, we're going to share a screen now. I'm going to share with you my desktop view. So, can all of you see this? All right, so going through uh, the presentation. So like we said before, uh, welcome to our virtual open house, the awesome experience. Um, and welcome to hopefully one day all of you as accepted students as your future home that you would come and call this place your home. I've, I've been calling it home for quite some time uh, because I lived on campus for five years as a student. As a staff member here, I also live on campus. So I've been living on campus for four years as a staff member. So. I'm just shy of the decade that I've been able to call this place home, and it has been a truthfully cherished moment. I met my wife here, so this place has some of the best memories that I've had in my life. Um, there is our mission statement uh, at the top. It's for, to create 
an environment that honors God and enables students to thrive. So with that, we have our five principles that we work through uh, here in residence life, and that's starting with Jesus, starting with Jesus first, um, your neighbor, loving your neighbor as yourself, um, going, building ourselves up in community, uh, discipleship, and accountability. And those are played out many multifaceted ways um, through residence life, communicating directly with students, through you living with your neighbors and building community with people on your hall and your roommates and your suite mates, discipleship opportunities through various organizations and, and campus ministries here on campus with Bible studies, and then accountability that students uh, would be able to keep one another accountable through this time and to following the rules, policies, procedures that are here. Um, so some of the benefits for living on campus um, are to be immersed in the CSU community. Um, at the center of all campus activities here on campus, it's a um, it's a very aesthetic campus. It's very home-bodied, uh, lots of trees, a green campus. Um, it's a great time. It's very short commute time. You can walk across the entire campus here at CSU in a short travel. Um, some universities where dorm rooms are 20, 30 minutes away here, you have at your longest walk, I think, from the quads to the nursing building might be the farthest thing that you have to travel from your dorm room uh, all the way to whatever class you may be taking. Um, you have a quick access to campus resources like the Learning Center, student activities, campus recreation, a gym, a pool, um, all sorts of campus resources on campus, it's free tutoring, counseling. So you have quick access to those uh, that living off campus, you do not see the benefit. And it's also an easy involvement in campus activities, student organizations, uh, and you have a higher chance of staying involved by living on campus because those resources, those opportunities, those things for you to have a shared experience in that are all here in one place. Um, so moving on. So living on campus, um, there are eight residence halls. The newest one opened in March 2019. Um, if there is time permitted, we may be able to get that in on the virtual tour. Um, typically, that is full of mostly upperclassmen. Um, depending on how many upperclassmen sign up in that building, we may open up rooms in there for incoming students and transfers, but that is on a very case-by-case -case basis. It is our most uh, populated building on campus, uh, so it has the highest population as far as space that we have available and the filling of those spaces. Um, we have suite-style living here on campus, so what that looks like in the typical room on campus is two bedrooms uh, separated by a bathroom. Um, so in each bedroom, it could have two or three roommates. And we'll get into that in a little bit uh, from now. But we do have separate living. So it's separated by gender. Uh, and some of our buildings on campus, you will see males and females within the same building, but separated by halls. We do not have co-ed dorms. Um, it's also separated by new students and returning students for the most part. We do have uh, one or two halls on campus that are a little bit of a blended community where we have some incoming freshmen, some transfers, uh, staying with some upperclassmen. But for the most part, our campus is separated by new students and returning students. So for our staff, we have approximately 15 RAs that live right on the hall there with you. Uh, it comes out to one to two per floor. Uh, so your RA is easily accessible. They um, do have duty nights throughout the week where they have to remain on campus and be there to serve the campus and, and to help you with anything you may need. So, Austin. My Wi-Fi can hiccup up right there. Um, but RA will be there on the floor with you and able to assist you in any way. Uh, we also have a position for um, most of the time, our senior RAs that we have had in place who have worked in our department for over one year that we see um, as, a, as a leader here on campus. And then we also have five residence life coordinators who are full-time professional staff who live on campus. Right now, we are at four. Um, we had a residence life coordinator leave us over the winter break, and so we are in the process of hiring a new residence life coordinator. Again, that is a professional staff member, as myself and Jessica are both residence life coordinators who live in the buildings here with you. Um, and we're here to serve you. Um, we have an office that is on campus as well for you to come and speak with us from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and we also have a residence life housing office for you to swing by there that may be able to catch us. 
Um, we do have duty nights as well where we have a res life coordinator who is on call um, for the duration of the evening that if you have any emergency need, you can always contact security. And nine times out of 10, unless security can handle it, they're contacting us and we'll be there to help you. Moving on from there, we're going to room assignments. So from here, we have a housing policy. All full-time students from the, um, who are not from the Tri-County area are required to live on campus until they reach the age of 20. So a lot of questions we, we commonly ask is, um, we get asked is if, you know, is it, do I, when I turn 20, can I move off campus? So the rule with that is you have to turn 20 before the start of the semester uh, to be able to move off campus. Um, new students are assigned once all housing documents are received in process. So that is your enrollment fee, uh, your housing application found on your MyCSU, and then your immunization form, which you can find that on your MyCSU as well. Um, your immunization form has to be in a CSU document. Uh, that means that we have our own specific immunization record. So if you want to bring that to your uh, primary health care provider, as well as your immunizations, they should be able to just transfer it over. They, re they can read that stuff better than we can. I'm not a trained medical professional. Um, and be able to sign that document for you. It's for us, our first come, first serve. So starting here, uh, right around this time, Jessica and I start looking through your housing applications, um, your roommate questionnaires, and we start playing eHarmony with you. We try to find you a roommate that we think you would, you would have common shared interest with, that hopefully you would come to find your best friend. I know my first roommate in college was the best man in my wedding. Um, so I was able to find my best friend. Uh, we roomed together all four years here at CSU. Um, that is not the case for everyone, but we will try to find someone for you who has a shared interest. Now, you do have the ability to request a roommate. And like we said, as first come, first serve, we will do our best to place you in a room assignment with a roommate of your choosing, uh, but we cannot guarantee that. They're assigned based on mutual requests. Uh, unlimited meal plans are available for every resident. Um, and assignments for incoming students are posted mid-May, uh, beginning of June, sometime in that time period. We post your room assignments available to you. So we'll be starting that process um, this week of placing incoming students, um, getting you into housing assignments of your choosing. Um, here are some of our housing tiers. So we do have some updates to this. Um, as you can take a moment and look over this information, I'll give you a little bit for that. Um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, our platinum housing is the new residence hall, and that sits at 6,000 per semester. Um, it's the suite style, so the way that that layout is a little bit different, and we'll see that in a virtual tour, hopefully if we have time, uh, where you have a living room space, uh, a door to two different bedrooms, that two people stay in each room, and then the bathroom has a door to the shower, a door to the toilet, and then two sinks as well. So it's a suite style. Um, there is a kitchen within the building, um, a conference room, a study room, and then a lounge on the first floor. They're double occupancy rooms. They have a private study area per suite, that living room area where you can set up however you and your suite mates want to. Um, the furniture, it's a, you know, adjustable loft style beds in the bedrooms with twin mattresses, a desk, a chair, a wardrobe, and a three drawer dresser. Um, we do permit students to move the furniture in the room to however they best see fit. Um, and we, and you're, when, when you move on campus, you can speak to your RA about approval for that in different situations. Jumping down to gold tier to improve student satisfaction, we've increased the number of two bedroom rooms on campus. Um, we, 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 heard, we listened to our students, we, we heard their wishes, and, and we were able to accommodate that by increasing the number of two person rooms and lowering the gold tier pricing to match the blue tier. So for the gold tier pricing, the layout of the bedroom uh, is the exact same to a blue room where it is two person per room shared by a bathroom, but in a gold tier, instead of it being five to a suite, there's only four to a suite. So it's two bedrooms on each, two roommates on each side shared by a bathroom. And that's gonna be in Russell West, Women's South, Women's North and Quad Three. Um, it's a double occupancy room. Uh, some of those rooms is, the majority of those rooms in those buildings have wardrobes. Uh, Women's South does not have the wardrobe furniture in it. Every year we work to improve the furniture that is on campus. We are moving in that direction of getting all wardrobes wardrobe furniture for you, um, but that is a year-by-year -year process. We increase the amount of wardrobes here on campus. So jumping on down to the blue tier, we see it's $5,400 a semester at cost, and that's Quad 1, Quad 2, and Russell East. Um, 
So for incoming students, the majority of them will be in the blue or white tier rooms. The blue and white tier are the, the shared suite with one another. So the blue tier side is a double occupancy room. The white tier side is a triple occupancy room and they'll be shared by the bathroom. So that's why the locations are the same. Um, that's why the descriptions are the same, except the double and triple occupancy. Uh, some of those rooms we have able to then update to wardrobe furniture, not all of them. Like I said, that is a process that we are working to improve the furniture here on campus year after year. Uh, so with that, we have some contact information. If you want to screenshot this, write this down. Um, this is how you'll be able to best contact us. Uh, our office, our residence life and housing office is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, so you'll be able to give us a call, shoot us an email, and you'll be able to receive a timely response in that. Um, and so, so we're going to just take you through a couple of the buildings, namely um, the few residence halls that freshmen are mostly residing in. Um, those are Russell East for freshmen women and the quads for freshmen guys. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about Women's South because we have freshmen and transfer students there as well. And then if we have time, we'll go through the suites and show you what those look like too. So we can start at Russell East and we'll tell you a little bit about those rooms. But it's automatically gonna take us to the suites. So we're just gonna take a second and go over to Russell. Let me go ahead over to Russell West. One more click. Russell East, I'm there. Perfect. Um, so Russell East and Russell West are actually connected. Russell East, though, houses um, freshmen, female, um, in two- and three-person rooms. Um, it is the only dedicated freshman building, freshman female building at this time. Um, and so the majority of women, freshmen women coming in will be placed there. Um, like Zach said in the PowerPoint that he just presented, uh, the suites are comprised of two and three person rooms. So one side of the suite will be a two person room and the other side will be a three person room and they are separated by a bathroom. Um, if we could go to the 360 view, we'll show you what an actual room looks like. Um, and then you'll also be able to see some pictures of our show suite as well. Perfect. So this is an actual suite. Um, our amazing marketing department did go through some rooms last year and take some pictures and videos so you could see what they actually look like. You can configure your furniture to do kind of what you want in your room. In this room, you'll see that they've kind of moved their furniture toward the back of the room so that they'll have space in the front for a futon and a living room area. That's definitely an option for you. You and your roommate or roommates can decide how you want to set up your room. Um, the only thing we do ask that you not do is disassemble furniture and that's for your safety. Um, we don't want anyone to get hurt taking apart furniture. Um, so this is a two person room in Russell East and there are some beautiful fairy lights. So you can kind of just get creative and do what you want in your room. Um, you can hang tapestries or, or pictures on the walls um, as long as the walls aren't damaged as a result. Um, <clears throat> sorry, in Russell East, this is another picture of an actual room. In Russell East, there are nine resident assistants. Um, just to give more insight on your resident assistants, they do live on your hall. Um, they are responsible for room inspections, which are once a month, as well as community meetings, which are also once a month. They also work to build community with you guys, um, host hall events. Um, a lot of our RAs will um, connect spiritually by hosting small groups or um, doing prayer groups with their residents as well. Um, and so that kind of just becomes like your person. They are at least sophomores, so they know about the school, they know about the campus, and they're able to answer any questions you may have as you're transitioning from home to college life. This is actually a picture of a show suite, and it is a good picture because it's also a three-person room. So you'll see in this room, there are three sets of furniture, three beds, three desks, and three dressers as well. Um, there is a possibility, depending on when you get your application in, that you'll be in a three-person room. It's totally fine. 
Um, they, it's a great way to meet more people, to connect with more people as well. And then this is the other side of that room, which is a two person room. Um, and so there are two sets of every type of furniture in here. This is what our standard bathroom looks like. So in most of our buildings, this is what the bathroom is gonna look like. There are two sinks, so a double sink. Um, generally, residents split that up with one room takes one sink, the other room takes the other sink. Um, and then there's also a shower and the bathroom, or a toilet, sorry, separated by a curtain. Um, residents are responsible for coming up with like how they're going to set up the cleaning schedule for their rooms and for their bathrooms. So because this is a shared space between two rooms in the suite, you'll work with your suite mates to figure out who's gonna do what in terms of cleaning um, and making sure that everyone in the suite is comfortable. Also, just to talk a little bit about Women's South, um, I don't know that we're actually gonna go over to the Women's South building for the virtual tour, but it is essentially the same thing. I think we lost Zach, that's okay because I'm sure he'll be back. Um, <laughs> Women's South is essentially the same as Russell East in terms of setup. Um, we do house some upperclassmen in Women's South, but we also house freshmen women and transfer women as well. Um, a lot of our freshmen that live in Women's South are athletes just because it's closest to the athletic facilities um, and it's closest to the field as well. Um, I am going to go ahead and pull up the virtual tour from my screen and share it with you guys so that we can continue while that cops back on. So just give me one second and I will share that with you. We're going to head over to the quads now. The quads are where most of our male freshmen transfers and upperclassmen are housed. Um, I don't know how many guys we have here with us on our um, live feed today, but just to speak to you guys a little bit, um, there are three quads, quad one, quad two, and quad three. Freshman guys are typically housed in quads one and two, and transfer students are generally housed in quad two as well. Um, the quads are similar in setup when it comes to the actual room and suite to our other buildings on campus. Um, so just to go through one of those rooms, just, we're going to go back for a second. This is the inside of the quads. It's set up kind of like a courtyard, so four um, sides to the building, and it encloses a green space in the middle. Um, there are no girls allowed in the quads, so it is an all-male space, um, and the 360 isn't coming up, but you guys can go and look at that room um, on the CSU website. However, the quads do also have a lounge space, um, and they also have a laundry room space as well. Um, and since it looks like we have just a couple of minutes, we'll take you over to the new residence hall, which here is the suites, um, and we'll show you what that looks like. It is open to upperclassmen first, so um, it fills up pretty quickly. Like Zach said, if we do still have space available, um, we do place some freshmen there, but it is space dependent. Um, each room or each suite is set up with a living room when you first walk in, and then two bedrooms with two people each in each room, and then a bathroom area, which has a toilet room, a shower room, and then an outside open sink area. So um, this is kind of what the suite looks like. This is our show suite that our enrollment department did a great job putting together. This is the living room area, um, which is really, we call it a study area. Um, residents are allowed to make decisions on how they want to decorate or utilize that space. Um, and then this is bedroom. So you'll see each bedroom has two sets of beds, uh, dressers, desks right here, as well as, or sorry, those are the desks. Um, and then wardrobes as well. The furniture is adjustable, it is movable, so you can configure, configure your room here um, however you'd like to as well. Um, in our new residence hall, we do have, oh, the picture of someone at the desk. We do have a kitchen. It is the only residence hall on campus at this moment that has a kitchen and it is um, five access, which means that only residents living in the building can access 
the kitchen. Um, there's also a large conference room for activities and for student use, and then a smaller study room as well. Um, there are also laundry facilities in this building too. Does anyone have any questions about, I'm gonna go back to the main screen. Jessica, can you talk about maybe the benefits to living on campus? Yeah. Um, so the real, I guess the biggest benefit is that you are surrounded by students who are kind of in the same space as you all the time. So especially coming in as a freshman, it's definitely important that you build community um, and that you find your place and your space on campus. And that is definitely a benefit to living on campus. Um, you'll be able to um, build community and engage with people a little bit more easily than you would if you were off campus. Um, everyone has different situations, but that is definitely an added benefit. There's a ton of events that happen on campus on any given day. Um, we have a ton of student organizations. We have athletic events going on, um, and it's just easier to access if you're living on campus. Also, Charleston is a little pricey when it comes to living. So it is cheaper to live on campus than it is to live off campus in many instances. So you'll save money. Um, you don't have to worry about cooking or buying food or groceries because you have an unlimited meal plan. Um, and then you have your room as well. I see someone in the chat. So I'm gonna come over here. Oh, yeah, I was you have to be an upperclassman to live in the suite. Um, you don't have to be an upperclassman. We do have some freshmen that live in the suite if space permits. However, it opens to upperclassmen first. Um, we do our upper, upperclassmen roommate selection before we place freshmen. So if there are no spaces available, then we can't place freshmen in there because the spaces are already taken. But it's not a requirement to be an upperclassman to live in the new residence. I had a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so me and like I already had my roommate and my suite mates, and our first pick was the new suite, like the new dorms. Mm -hmm. So if we weren't like able to get the new suites, um, like would there still be a possibility of us still being suite mates, like mm -hmm. with the people that we picked, like in like the other dorms? Yes. So when it comes to placing um, you all as freshmen your actual housing preference is just a preference. Um, we put you in a space if we have the space available. However, we do always try to keep preferred roommates and suite mates together. So if on your roommate application, you indicate that you wanna live with a specific group of people, then we'll find a space where we can accommodate all of you to live together as long as everyone has all of their documents in um, and we're able to fill the space for everyone. Yeah. Any other questions? I'd like I have a question. Yes. Um, so do most people go random or like, is there a way you recommend finding roommates? Because I don't know anyone like for my school or my area that's going. Um, so like, I don't know anyone ahead of time. So I was just wondering, do you have a good way is the Facebook page. That's how I found my roommates. That's the best way. Like if you post and say you're looking for a roommate, then most people like will comment, say I'm looking for a roommate. And it's really good that way. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> we do. Um, we encourage you also to be as honest as possible when you're answering your questionnaire um, on your housing application, just because if you don't find somebody, um, that's how we pair you up. And it's, you're more likely to have a better outcome with a random roommate if you're honest and we can pair you up with someone who's similar to you than you are if, you know, try to cut through a corner here or there, right. it might not turn out the best. Um, but in the event that you're not able to find a roommate, we do try to pair you up as best as we can with someone who's similar to you, who has a similar living preference in terms of what the room will be used for, um, lights out, what time lights will be out. Just, we have a lot of different questions that we ask in order to try to pair you up um, well. I think Stephanie asked about TVs in the suite. We do not include TVs, so you will have to bring your own, um, but that's a great question. And then Julie says, can you talk about what's provided in the rooms um, in terms of furniture? So yes, that's a good 
question. In the new residence hall, we do not provide the furniture in the living areas that's for you to come in and bring yourself. Also on the virtual tour, you saw that some of the rooms had futons. We don't provide those either. If you wanna bring in a futon, that's completely up to you, but we only provide um, the basic furniture needs. So that's a bed, a wardrobe or closet, a dresser um, and a desk. Um, you are able to bring in small appliances and that includes a refrigerator, a microwave and a coffee pot or Keurig. Um, you're not allowed to have hot pots or crack pots or hot plates or any of those things because we don't want them to set on fire. So there are, um, in some rooms, there are two closets or there are two wardrobes or three. It depends on, um, with the wardrobes, it depends on how many people are in the room. So if it's a three person room, you'll either have three wardrobes or two closets and three dressers. And what will happen there is Usually, um, roommates will decide that two people will get the closet and then another person will get extra dresser space to make up for the lack of closet space. One more question that we just got, what is there to do on campus? I think that means in terms of activities. Um, so just again, there are a ton of student organizations on campus. And I believe that if you don't see a student organization that you want to join, but you have an interest and you can find a certain number of people. You can create a student organization as long as it's approved. Um, so we do have some fraternities and sororities. We have student government. Um, we have a, oh yeah, I was just, we do have sororities. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so we have MPHC sororities as well as Alpha Delta Pi, and there might be another one on campus as well. Um, we also have a uh, Campus Activities Board, so they're responsible for planning a lot of the activities on campus as well as, as, well as athletics. And then within Residence Life, um, one big push that we've been making is to do Residence Life focused programming. So those are events that are specifically for residents um, just to help you get acclimated to campus and to focus on some key areas, um, just like transitioning, financial wellness, health and wellness, um, service. And so we're working on those programs as well for you guys. Um, can freshmen join a sorority? Most of the ones that I know, the answer is no to that. However, I think the answer is yes in Alpha Delta Pi. So it just depends on the sorority. Um, probably would have to check with each organization to see what their requirements are. Yes, um, I actually am the staff advisor for Alpha Delta Pi on our campus, and they do allow freshmen to join. Um, we do a big club drop-in that includes sororities and fraternities at the very beginning of fall semester. Um, so if you're interested in joining one of those, um, I definitely would recommend going and chatting with the students who are currently a part of those organizations. Um, but there are opportunities for, for freshmen to join, at least I know Alpha Delta Pi, just because I'm involved with it. <laughs> yes. Um, well, that's someone yeah. I want to join, so that's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are a ton of uh, organizations, though, for you to join. Um, and like Whitney said, there's club drop-in at the beginning of every semester, so you can just walk around and see what might interest you. Um, the Outdoor Club is a pretty big one here on campus, too. They do a lot of fun things, so if that is something you're interested in. Uh, you can look into that as well, but there are definitely a lot of things to do on campus, both within residence life and outside of residence life, so just be on the lookout for that. Um, we do encourage all students to download Buck Nation once they get here, which is how you stay connected. <laughs> Sorry, we she got it. Um, that's how you stay connected with what's going on on campus. It has all of the major events coming up on campus, including um, chapels and alternate chapels as well. Um, so that's a great way to stay connected to. Oh, and our Sweet 16 events, which are major school events as well. Those are campus-wide events. Um, this past year we had neon night which was like our big dance around valentine's day we've done um the polar bear plunge which is in january and that is diving into the pool and freezing cold water um the sga formal usually happens it's not going to happen this year because of the circumstances 
that we are currently facing. Um, but there are a ton of events. We have midnight breakfast around finals um, just to give students a kickoff into finals week. So there are a ton of events and a ton of things for you to do on campus. And that is definitely the benefit of staying here and staying on campus is that there's so much for you to do in so many ways for you to get connected. Um, who can I talk to about joining the worship team for chapel? That is campus ministries. Um, so I believe that they uh, will have, if they haven't had already, a uh, um, virtual preview as well. So definitely check out the website and walk. It's actually tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And they can answer all of those questions for you. Um, campus ministries also oversees Elevate, which is our weekly um, weekly ministry for students. Um, it's a time for students to come together and worship and hear the word. Yep. These are great questions. Does anyone um, else also, have Sorry, yeah. I know there's like chapel through the week. Yep. But I feel like someone told me that there's like an on-campus like church on Sunday. Is that a yeah. thing? Yes. Summit is the on-campus church. Um, so I don't think that they're affiliated specifically with campus, but they do meet on campus. Um, and so you'll see a lot, if you go to Elevate, you'll see a lot of people from Elevate at Summit mm -hmm. also. Um, do you have to like go to, no. um, on Sun like on Sunday to be in Elevate, like to be on the worship team? No, you don't. So it's a completely different, different um, entity okay, gotcha. in and of itself. Um, so they meet on campus, but they're a completely separate church. Gotcha. Yeah. And, um, just to add to that, I actually was on the Elevate worship team when I was a student, um, and that's where I met my husband. So um, it's got a very special place in my heart, Jessica. <laughs> that place. You had a great experience. I, I did. Know. I did. I loved my time at CSU. Um, but John Davis, who is actually hosting the campus ministry session, he's our campus pastor at CSU. He is also the pastor of Summit Church. Um, so yes, two separate entities, um, same pastor. Um, he's amazing. He is going to be so much fun tomorrow. So if you have time at 10 a.m. tomorrow, I would definitely tune in. Um, but auditioning for the worship team is um, very similar to auditioning for your church worship team. They'll give you a few different songs that you can choose from um, if you're a vocalist or an instru instrumentalist, um, and then you'll come at a specific time during the semester and audition in front of a group of your peers. Um, so it was a really fun experience as a student. I met a lot of my friends and my husband as a part of that, um, and Elevate is so much fun. It's a great place for you to go and just get a good group of friends. Um, and they also have a lot of missional opportunities as well. So you learn a lot about those opportunities when you go. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, Campus Ministries is great. Um, we have several choirs. We actually, um, if you are coming from music, we do have a couple of chapels where our choirs will come and sing. Um, there's also a gospel choir and there's the Elevate Dance Team. There's also a gospel dance team as well. So if that's something that you're interested in, you are welcome to join those as well. 